While this room is currently decorated for a Harry Potter themed party, by simply changing a few wall hangings, you can adapt it to a wide range of venues. For example, you could use it for a cosplay party or for binge watching the Game of Thrones if you can tolerate the inconsistency of a widescreen TV on a medieval castle wall. While it's a lot of fun, I have to warn you that it's not easy and it's not inexpensive. For example, this 20 by 17 foot room took me about 40 hours to put together. Even after you've built all of the equipment, it's still an eight hour job just assembling the room. Also, it costs over $200 in materials. Most of that went to the vinyl tablecloths used to cover the walls. But for anyone who really wants one, this video will give you some ideas of how to do it. Assuming you want a temporary decoration, the most economically practical solution is to buy plastic tablecloths that are imprinted with a stone-like pattern and then pin these up on the walls. When I went to do my room, I checked with Hobby Lobby, Joann's, Michael's, Walmart, and Party City. None of them had anything like this. Then I went to Amazon and I found three. These two are by the same company, Beastel. Uh, they have the same pattern, but this is a 40 inch by 30 foot roll, and it's lighter color and it has a, a, a very definite pink color to it. This is great if you're dealing with a room that's going to be very low lit, very uh, uh, dim lights, because it'll help bring out the pattern better. Uh, if you have brighter lights, this has the same pattern, but it's quite a bit darker. It's not as pink, and it has the strongest three dimensional effect to it. The stones really look like they're uh, leaning out of the wall and this is the, this is really good. This comes in a 56 inch wide by 9 foot long piece and it's actually much better because if you get this 40 inch wide uh, roll uh, it's going to take two and a half strips of this to cover your average 8 foot wall whereas you can get by with just two of these so it makes it a lot simpler. But my favorite is this cobblestone pattern, uh, which is again from Walmart, available in uh, 56 by not, uh, inch by 9 foot sections. It looks more like the stone wall you'd expect in a, um, a medieval castle. These look more like a cave. Uh, the three-dimensional effect is not quite as strong here as it was with this, but this has the big advantage of allowing any folds or any uh, unions where you transfer from one piece to the next to be hidden very effectively. It's a lot harder with these. Also, these have a more demonstrable uh, repetition pattern. So when you get a big panel of these up on the walls, you can say, oh yeah, you know, you can see the same pattern every 20 inches. This, not so much. So I, I prefer this one. It's also the cheapest. You can buy these in uh, eight packs where you get eight of them at a discount and uh, for me this ended up being the cheapest. I'm not going to quote any specific prices because uh, the prices on Amazon change from day to day. If you want this look for cobblestone tablecloths. For these look for uh, stone wall tablecloths. Because of the way the cobblestone pattern is printed you can't lay these uh, vertically and cut the, uh, the bottoms off of the nine foot length that way uh, to get a continuous covering over your walls. The reason is, is then you've got vertical stripes that just don't look like a stone wall. So you have to lay these horizontally, which means you have to tape uh, two pieces together to cover the entire wall. Now you might think that it would be difficult to get the pattern to match, but you've got a number of things working in your favor. First of all, uh, the pattern is so, um, random uh, that it's really easy to uh, hide a seam or hard to spot it if you're looking at it. Uh, the second thing is you've got some nice strong vertical lines. So if you cut the top layer of uh, the sheet off at one of these lines and then bring it down so that it matches the line on the next piece, the seam is hidden by the detail of this line. In fact, here's the seam right here. The second thing is, is when you're taping these together, scotch tape, regular clear scotch tape works great. But I found whenever I tried laying large strips to make a continuous seal, 
it didn't work because you invariably stretch the scotch tape a little bit and then when you press it down and it relax it creates wrinkles this way what i found worked much better was to use a one inch piece of tape about every three inches it leaves these gaps but uh, they're almost impossible to see so this worked really well for me another thing that does is it lets some air holes uh, uh, here so that if you get air trapped back here besides having to uh, get out escape through the bottom it can escape through these and trapped air behind these is a problem no matter what tablecloth you use you're gonna find that there is a horizontal pattern to it for example with the cobblestone you'll have a row of all light colored cobblestones and then a row of lighter darker lighter darkers when you put your two pieces together it's real important to make sure that you get the same rows lined up otherwise when people come in and look you're going to go from a light dark light dark to an all light and that is a, a pretty big disruption in the pattern and that'll be obvious so you, that's something you want to avoid when you start putting your pieces together i recommend using black headed push pins for uh, pinning the, uh, the tablecloths to the walls. When you place these in an area that's black, they disappear, you can't see them. And even if you put them, if you're forced to put one where it's light, it blends into the pattern so much that people just think it's a defect in the stone. Because the plastic is thin, it stretches and tears very easily. So anytime you have a pin, and there's one right here, back the plastic with a piece of uh, duct tape or even masking tape will work. It'll really prevent the stretching and the tearing. Because push pins have a, a fairly high head, if you use one to tape the underside piece of uh, tablecloth down and then you overlap it with this, you're gonna, with the next piece, you're gonna get a bulge right, tra right there, which isn't too effective. So what I found works pretty good, a regular thumbtacks. These lay flat enough so they'll hold this one down and the white heads are covered up by the next layer. To make the seam as invisible as possible, I found moving the next layer, the overlapping layer of tablecloth back and forth to match the stone pattern as well as possible helps a lot. For example, this is a pretty good match right here. But it's not real critical because even in these two where there is a slight color mismatch, most people won't even recognize this because the pattern in general is so broken up that it's hard to pick out small defects like that. Doors create two problems. First, the handles stick out creating an unnatural bulge in the wall. And second, air almost always leaks in or out of the seam, uh, the opening in the door. Uh, which can cause uh, the, um, the plastic table claws to bulge out and it can be quite uh, strange looking. Uh, what I found is wherever is possible, remove the doorknobs. Most of these come off fairly easily. If it's a doorknob that you can't take off for reasons of security, be careful to not pin cl uh, the cloth down near the doorknob. You want that outward bulge as gra uh, graceful or gradual as possible so that it's not so obvious. I used masking tape to seal all the edges inside and out where necessary on my doors and I found that that uh, cut down on the uh, air being sucked in and bulging the wall out quite a bit. The reason that can happen is if you're running an air conditioner or a, um, a heater, uh, it's very seldom that a room will have as much air being sucked out of it is being pushed into it so that it pulls air from every crack that's available. Taping the, uh, the, uh, the gaps in doors uh, will help a lot in preventing that. And speaking of air conditioning and heating, uh, one thing I found very useful is that if you uh, play with how much of the vents, the return air vents, are covered or uncovered, you can sometimes get the airflow in and the airflow out balance perfectly so that uh, you don't have any suction or any inflation into the room. Uh, in this case, I found that by closing this one off and just leaving that one open, not only did it create less of a disruption to the stone wall pattern, but it created a perfect balance so that I didn't have any air being sucked into the room and that let the, uh, the wall coverings hang much flatter. 
If there's an opening to the room that you're decorating, or if there's a window, it creates a real problem. If you leave the window uncovered, light coming through it will pass through the thin plastic of the wall coverings and make them look faded. It, it'll look like uh, light shining through it, and it's not very attractive. It ruins the uh, medieval effect. If you black the drapes out so no light comes through and you have walls underneath the rest of the plastic that are light colored, like I do, a light yellow, then that area is going to look darker and again, look unnatural. A solution I found, which should work for just about everyone, is to go to Walmart and buy an inexpensive flat bed sheet, which is as close to the colors of your walls as uh, you can get. And they have a wide range, so it shouldn't be too difficult. And then pin that over the opening, whether it's a window that's been blacked out or a large opening like this, so that the color underneath the plastic covering matches the walls as close as possible. Uh, in my case, I found a, uh, a yellow, which was almost a perfect match. And you can't tell where uh, the cloth leaves off and the walls take over. It's a really good way to solve this problem. And by the way, if you're interested in the wave motion machine on the uh, bookcase, you can find out how to make one yourself by doing a uh, YouTube search for how to make a wave motion machine. I have two videos about it. You might find it interesting. The sight and sound of the fireplace, even a small television version like this, is a great way to increase the medieval feel, the atmosphere, of a room like this. The problem is just cutting it into the wall like this looks very artificial. I found adding a simple flat black surround really makes it look more believable. This one was made out of half inch thick foam board. Lighting was a big problem. Like most rooms, mine had a large electric overhead light which didn't blend well with the medieval themes of the room. Uh, I wanted something like flaming braziers or torches, uh, but I couldn't find anything that looked halfway decent. There are a couple of products which uh, use a little fan and some uh, flickering red cl uh, cloth that uh, ripples with, when the fan's on and lights shine on it. And they look terrible. I mean, they look like rags being whipped in the wind and they don't look like fire uh, and they're very expensive. A compromise uh, that I found worked pretty good was to use candles, which are certainly uh, period proper, uh, but the light bulbs were a problem because they gave off uh, fairly point sources of light, which looked wrong. But I didn't want to spend a lot of money on um, some sort of uh, diffuser. Then I got the idea that I used three ounce white plastic bathroom cups. These created a nice diffuser, uh, but they didn't look medieval. So I took strips of duct tape and created sort of a wrought iron pattern around them. Uh, this is not the best, but it worked really well. And it was uh, totally believable once uh, all the other lights were out and I had uh, just these going. I found that using LED bulbs was a really good idea because it takes 10 40 watt equivalent bulbs to uh, dimly light my uh, 20 by 15 foot, uh, 20 by 17 foot room. That's a lot of incandescent bulbs that's going to heat the room up really fast. Going to LEDs is a little expensive, but it kept the room temperature down really nice. So, if you're planning to build your own medieval castle room, I hope you'll find these suggestions helpful. It's a lot of work, but when you see the reactions, the amazement on people's faces when they see it for the first time, it's all worth it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, thank you for watching. For hundreds of more articles covering everything from how to make chocolate to the strange world of lucid dreaming, I hope you'll visit my main website, waynesthisandthat.com.